join us in the choir. in the best love book, 232. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
Good to see each one of you today. I hope you can, I hope you can sing that with all of your heart. And that you've got a blessed assurance that Jesus is yours today. If you don't, it, today's the day of salvation. If you need the Lord, I know He's here and ready to, uh, to extend that invitation to you today to have that blessed assurance. Amen. Uh, it's good today. Good day to be in the Lord's house. Good to see each one of you that's come out today. Before we go any further, we will go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, any prayer requests before we do that, though, this morning? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. James has got to preach the word this evening, so you pray for him. The Lord will clear it all out. Give him what he needs. Yes, Carol. Yes. Leatrice is not doing well in her back. Uh, Ron said in all week she's, she's kind of struggled with it. So you remember her. I know she'd love to be here. So remember her. Good to see some that have been ill back. Um, good to see those that have got to get back. I know there's more that's got a bunch of fall allergy stuff that they're contending with. But uh, continue to remember Brother Jason. Sister Sue, you got anything to share on Sure, sure. Keep remembering him. Sure. Remember Sharon's brother as he's Lynn. Remember him as he has this uh, these tests done for cancer. Remember that. And my coach. Yes, came through surgery. Good. No, no other updates that we know of, but yeah, Mike, Brother Mike Nix um, had open heart surgery this week, and uh, we know that he came through that through that well. Remember, that's so that's a that's a praise. Then that there too, I, we've, there's plenty of things to praise God for. Um, we always bring a lot of needs before Him, but sometimes we we lack giving Him the thanksgiving that He's worthy of. So continue to lift uh, each one of these up in prayer. Remember Maggie Helen. Uh, I know she's. It kind of took a step back, and and uh, keep remembering her and the family. Any others? All right, let's go to Lord in prayer. Sister Rita, would you lead us in prayer? Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the privilege of prayer. We thank you, Lord, for this house to meet in and to praise you in song and to read your holy word, and to learn more about what you would have us to do with our lives. We thank you, Lord, for all that have gathered here today, and we ask your blessings upon each person, Father, that um, they would know your will for them. And these that have requested prayer for friends and loved ones and brothers and sisters in Christ, those that are um, struggling with physical situations and those that are on the road to recovery, we just pray that you'd be very close to them. Let them sense your presence and your peace and your healing touch, Father. We thank you, Lord, for um, Richard Lee, and we ask that you would bless him as he speaks to us today and as he brings your word to us. I thank you, Lord, for all your blessings to me. And to my family, I thank you for each one of them. I thank you for this Christian family gathered here today. Bless us with your presence. And may your spirit feel free to move. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 148. 148.
69. First, second, third, and last. 69. <coughs> I wandered in the shades of night till Jesus came to me. first, second, and last on this one also.
lifeline, isn't it? We've all got a, a job to do and throw that line out. So if you'll all stand, we'll take up our morning tithes and offering if the men will come. We'll say one thing I'm thankful for right now and if 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 you're if you've got a song get it ready if you got a if you got a testimony get it ready I'm gonna blab real quick so you got time but uh, I have you know what I enjoy I enjoy the offering music anybody else anybody else in my lands and I know it's been said we've got some amazing musicians uh, and I'm, I'm not gonna uh, you know we don't want their head to get too big but uh, they do a fantastic job, and I just sit up here in, in peace listening to them offering those offering songs. I just, I love it. So uh, it is truly a blessing, truly a blessing. Uh, I'll just say this. I, I've been to a lot of different churches, and they don't even have a piano player, can't even get one instrument, and there's a lot of talent here, and I'm thankful for to, to, to the Lord for that especially. So anybody got a song on their heart? Anybody got a testimony? Anything on your heart at all this morning? Anything at all. Sure. God is good. Okay. Jimmy? Yes, he has. Amen. Amen. Sister Carol. <laughs> it's... Oh, <laughs> secret admirer. <laughs> Pulling a trick on you. Well, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Now, Carol, is today the day? Today is the day. I think Mickey's birthday is today, too. Oh, my lands. Same day. It. Yes, 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 yes. Lots of thankful hearts. We have a lot to be thankful for. Um, it seems like it's always stacked against us, but at the end of the day and at the end of the week and at the end of our days, God is truly good and has blessed us more than we're even worthy of. Anybody else got anything before we turn it over to Brother Lee? <coughs> okay. I think they're all through, Brother Lee. 
I'm going to let him uh, get going, and we're going to go to the Lord in prayer as we turn the service back over to Brother Lee to share the word with us today and uh, ask for God's uh, work here. Brother Bill Gray, would you lead us in prayer? Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good to be here with you. I'm going to turn the service upside down just to start with. We're going to do the last first, and then when we get to the last, we may do the last again. Uh, ordinarily, uh, we do this at the, at the end of the service, but we've got one gentleman who has uh, uh, actually volunteered to join the church, and we're going to open the church doors right now for anyone who would like to join. Brother Fred, come forward, would you please? Brother Fred is uh, casting his lot with us and been here, and everybody's known him for, uh, I started to tell how many years, Fred, I'm not going to, 90 years almost, <laughs> all right, you all know Brother Fred Terry, he's, he's, he's living pretty 90 years, 90 years. 90, <laughs> almost, and he comes to uh, cast his lot with us here at Macedonia. Uh, we, we do this real quickly and real informally. Uh, do we have a motion from the body to accept him into fellowship here at Massey? Second. 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 All in agreement, say amen. amen. You're a member of the church, brother. God bless you. <laughs> we don't mess around. No, we mess around. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't say a thing about what got him interested in Macedonia, <laughs> but long years ago, the same thing got me interested in Macedonia. <laughs> Time for true confession. I'm, I'm sitting here before you barefooted. Randy looked at my feet. <laughs> I, 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 was, I was speaking... I was speaking figuratively. I've got my expensive iPad right there. I, I got up at 2 o'clock this morning and added to my sermon notes and worked on it a couple of hours. And so I'm a little bit sleepy. <laughs> and the blessed thing won't work. So I have... And I printed th some notes out, and they're at home on my desk. If you want to run and get them, I, we can do that. So I'm barefooted. I've got, I've got nothing here. Oh, I've got this. All right. <laughs> Mark, the last chapter. I'll not say all I was going to say, but let me say this. Brother Steve had a singing, Throw Out the Lifeline. And I'm going to read some scripture about God wanting us to do that. <clears throat> Mark chapter 16, if you will, find verse 14. Jesus has been crucified. He has arisen. The people have found him gone from the tomb. They have shared the news with other believers. And many of the believers did not believe. And Jesus appears to his followers, and we find that in 14. Verse 14, Afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said to them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth 
and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Let's pray again, would you please? Brother Tommy Santee, would you stand and pray for us, please, brother? Amen. Amen. It's been a long time since this happened. It's been a couple of thousand years since this happened. The people that lived then are long gone and mostly forgotten, except by those of us who are believers in the Word and, and read it. So is it still important is it still worthwhile to carry out what's called the Great Commission this is called the Great Commission when when the Lord told them go into all the world and preach the gospel to everybody is it still important or has that worn out over a period of years <laughs> well if it has worn out we're in deep trouble The same saving power that worked back at that time works today. And if you've been saved, it's, it's by that same power that these listeners to Christ were, were saved back then. And you know, as long as time continues, I believe that that word will still be true and God's power will still be able to save those that come to him. And so if it still works, then the Great Commission is still in effect and we still need to go and spread the gospel. Well, now, why, why is that, do you suppose? Why do we need to spread the gospel? Well, one reason is <laughs> that, that there are still lost folks out there. There are still people out there that don't know the Lord, and we who do know it, we who are familiar with it, we who are followers of Christ are the ones who know what to tell them, who know how to tell them about what he did and what his promises to us are. And so... Uh, we need to spread it because it's still true. Paul wrote, the wages of sin is death. He wrote, all have sinned. And so those out there that haven't heard the word are in need, just like we were in need before we heard the word. So if all have sinned and if the wages of sin is death, all are bound for eternal death unless they have met the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and it's up to us to spread that word. <laughs> and I can hear all of us saying to ourselves under our breath, I can't do that. I can't do that. H have you felt like you couldn't effectively spread the word? I felt like that. I feel like that every time I s sit up here before you, every time I stood before you back when I was still alive. I, 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 I felt that way all the time. I didn't have the ability, I didn't have the power to share something as wonderful as the gospel is that whosoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now what does that mean if we do that? What if we call on the name of the Lord? What if our sins are forgiven? What, what benefit is, is there to that? Well... Have you ever had a big load lifted off your shoulders? Or have you ever had one put upon your shoulders? I had an experience this week, I've never had, this past week, I've never had before. I had some physical therapy and they put me in a tank. I started to say a stock tank, it wasn't a stock tank. They put me in a pool of water four and a half feet deep and, and, and I had to walk and kick and do all kinds of ungainly things. And, and, and when I came out, it was almost an hour later and I'd been in there and I was used to that water holding me up and I had to climb up four, five, or six steps. I never saw anything so difficult in my life. I, I felt like I weighed 480 pounds. 
I'm on my way, but I'm not there yet. And I felt so heavy. Well, it, it's that kind of a weight. And, and the, the more I stepped out of the water, the heavier I got and the more difficult it was to climb those steps because I was used to feeling light in the water. It's just the other way around with us when we're in sin, with the sinner out there. He's carrying a weight. She's carrying a weight. And that weight weighs us down. And when we meet Jesus, when we learn of him, when we ask him to forgive us and to lift that load, he will do it and we begin to feel lighter. Maybe not physically, but I, I'll tell you what, I believe that when I came to the Lord, I got lighter physically. I could walk with a spring in my step. Remember that? How, how good you felt when you came to the Lord, how relieved you were not to carry that load because he takes it from us and, 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 and he removes it as far as the east is from the west, buries it in the depths of the sea, it'll be found no more, and, and, and we can go on with him. So we need, to, we need to carry out the gospel because there are people out there that need it, desperately need it. Now, we need also to carry out the Great Commission because we're the only ones that can do it. <laughs> Jesus left it with the apostles, with his close followers, and he gave them... Uh, specific instructions to go forth and preach. They'd been doing that already. He said, keep up the good work, boys, because people need to hear it. And, and we're far removed from that, but we've got the job that they had. We're not apostles, but we are followers, and we know what it is to be saved, and we are the only ones that can tell you. Did you know <laughs> it's not good people that can spread the gospel? It's not even preachers or pastors that can spread the gospel because, unfortunately, there are a lot of pulpits filled today by people who are not born-again Christians. There are lots of pulpits that are filled today by people who are not believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not making that up. I wish I were. But I'm not making that up. Why my mind is going to, to uh, New England, I don't know. But w we, we were visiting there one time in the, the church where Benjamin Randall, the founder of this denomination, met the Lord. It's a big, beautiful church. It's deteriorating because they have just a handful of people going there. And the lady that conducted us on the tour th through this church said our pastor is teaching that God accepts homosexuality. Your pastor doesn't believe that, by the way, just so you know. What God said was sin a long time ago is still sin today, don't you think? What he said is right is still right today. And we have to make some choices sometimes. <laughs> and it's up to us to spread the gospel, not, as I started to say, not just to good people, not just to preachers necessarily, but to born-again people who have experienced what those folks out there can experience and who have received what they can receive. Michael was talking in Sunday school about oh so many different good things that we need to meditate on, but the fact that we do still have problems down here as Christians, but we're not meant to stay down here. We're not going to stay down here. I've mentioned before that I've always been a homebody, but I'm more that than I used to be even, I guess because it's harder to get away, harder to get around, you know. And, and I'm always glad to get back home. And I, I kind of have a feeling that when we get to heaven, we're going to feel more at home than we have ever felt anywhere in our lives because God's made us a place there. He's, he's prepared us a home there. And... and and he's going to receive us there. Where he is, we can be also. 
we need to carry out the Great Commission because the, the, the answers that people give to the world today are not the true answers, are not the eternal answers that our soul needs and longs for. We can figure out a lot of things. Have you ever figured out something in this life and, and you just knew you had it pegged and it fell off the hook? You ever do that? One time, this is maybe not scriptural, but you, you hang on here. <laughs> I figured out how, how a guy can get rich one time. Anybody, if he's working for a company. I figured it out all by myself. <laughs> I did some fingering. That people were talking about their retirement plan at work. What is it called, a 40K1 or something like that? 401K. I don't know what the K stands for, but anyway, I figured out if a guy would do all of that and, and just forget Social Security and do all of that and work for till he got to be too old to work, He'd have enough money he could retire. I figured that. And then something happened, and, and I read that people's 401ks were kind of just going somewhere else. Did they come to you, Doug? They've not come to him yet. Maybe they're on the way. I, I don't know. But <clears throat> sometimes we figure out things, and, and they don't work here. But God's plan's always going to work, and it's always going to be true, and we can count. <clears throat> we can count on that. <clears throat> Pardon me. All right, now what, what is the gospel? It's to go and preach and teach. But Lee, you just said it doesn't have to be the preachers doing that. <laughs> no, you can do it. How do I share the gospel? Well, I'm prompted to say, and I wasn't going to say this, but I'm prompted to say, one of the main ways you can share the gospel is to live it. <laughs> you know what? I, I would rather see a testimony than to hear great glowing words from somebody that doesn't demonstrate it. Somebody said something like, it's better to walk it than to talk it. Now, I think we need to do both. You understand? I think we need to do both. But if we, if we talk a good Christian testimony and don't walk it, our talk is of no use. I heard a man complaining one time, talking one time. He, he was very sad. He had a new friend move into the neighborhood or he had moved into a new neighborhood one and made friends with a, a neighbor across the street and down a couple of houses. And they, they both were interested in sports cars and they both rebuilt old cars and did things like that. And, and he said, we got along just fine. And he was a gentleman and, and he, he talked with me and he talked nice. And, and then one day when we were visiting and having a good conversation, another one of his friends came up and he said, this guy started cussing like a sailor. And he said, he, he said I couldn't understand it. And the, all I know is that maybe this fellow had more influence on him than, than I did. But talking and, and, and then not really following through is not going to get us there. I don't think any of us are going to talk our way into heaven. The Lord's made the way for us to get there. All we've got to do is follow. We've got to follow. And we do need to walk the walk. And people are going to see us better than they hear us. Sometimes, I'd rather nobody see me. Let's be honest. Sometimes I'd rather nobody see me. Ever feel that way? Be honest. Anybody ever feel that way? I, I, I just assume they didn't see what I'm doing or how I'm acting or how mad I am or hear how cruel words came out of my mouth. I'd just rather they be at Walmart when I'm doing that. We need to walk the true walk. We need to be an example because people are going to look at us. 
And some of your friends are going to know you better than you think they do. They may love you anyway, but they'll know you better than, than you think they do. They say many more people come to the Lord because of the influence of their friends than because of the church and the preacher. And I'm sure that's right. So live it and walk the walk and talk the talk as well. All right. He said, go and preach the gospel. Now, who are we going to preach to out there? We've said that a lot of people don't know the Lord. Do, do, do we just want to go out and witness to the good folks? I mean, those bad folks are pretty rough, and we don't like to be around them anyway. Do we just talk to the good folks? Or, or, or do we just need to witness and live right before the bad folks? Or would, do we need just to witness and, and live right before the really bad folks? Because Lord knows they need to be saved. Now, what did he say? Let's look at verse 15. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to your best friends and let the others go to hell. That's not what my Bible says. Go, he said, preach the gospel to every creature. That's the good man. That's the bad man. That's the really bad man. They all need to know how to be saved. And if somebody has not come to the Lord and he's a good man, he's just as lost as the very bad man. He may not do as bad a thing, but he's lost. And I don't believe there's an intermediate state between being lost and being found. I believe you're either saved or you're not saved. There's not a middle ground. And once the bell rings for us, I believe that there's not a way to change from one to the other. As the tree falleth, so shall it lie. All right, verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be damned. Jesus spoke plainly sometimes, didn't he? Now notice, notice something. I've got to address this. I'll just, I'll just hit it and go on. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Is Jesus teaching that we've got to be baptized? The baptism washes away our sins? I don't believe so, but he, he was baptized. <laughs> As an example. And I'll tell you this. The Bible makes such a strong case for baptism that I don't want to remain unbaptized. I'll just say that. And I think you need to be if you're saved. All right. If you believe and baptize, you'll be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. Why did he say such a strong thing there? Well, back at this at the time the King James Bible was translated, it, it didn't it didn't have quite the strength that it does now when it says to be damned, but it had the meaning nonetheless. He that believeth not shall be lost, and we know that leads to damnation. So it's important that we get there now. And then there's some other things. Let, let's just look at this. These signs shall follow them that believe. If we're be if we're believers. These things are going to follow. They'll cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up servant, serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it'll not hurt them. Lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. How many of those things do we need today? I would say all of them. Do you think we need all those? Let, let's look at them one by one. In my name shall they cast out devils. Is it possible that God's people might cast out devils today, do you think? Is it possible? Or, or let me back up a step beyond that. Is there today in our enlightened age such a thing as demons and demon possession? I see some heads nodding, and I see some puzzled expressions. <laughs> what are you talking about, Lee? I believe, I believe in devils. I don't like to. I don't want to be considered a radical, but I believe that there are evil spirits in this world working busily today. And I believe that we can rebuke them and in the name of Christ tell them to leave 
and they'll have to. They'll cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. Oh, my, we're not Pentecostal or charismatic here. What are we talking about? If God wants me to speak with a tongue that I don't know to co correspond with somebody that needs to hear the gospel, he can do that. And I believe he will do that. I believe he has done that. Is that too strong in a free will Baptist church? I think, I think we ought to know God can do anything. I, I was told by a man I worked with that when he was in the Navy, one of his fellow sailors, when they would go to a foreign country, would, would study some ahead of time, but then when he got there, he surprised all the other guys because he could go out and witness to the people when they got to go ashore in their language. Now, he didn't speak fluently, but he, he, God gave him that. We're speaking new tongues. They shall take up serpents. Brother Wendy, are you here? You've heard Wendy Bagwell talk about the serpent. Is that to show our great faith? Is that to show off? Is that to make... A, a entertainment program? I don't think so. But I remember that the Apostle Paul one time took up a serpent. Remember that? I think he's saying, if a serpent bites you, don't invite him for goodness sakes. I don't think you should. Anybody want to invite a snake to bite you? No, don't invite him. But if it happens and you're God's children, he, he said, you'll not be hurt. If God's not done with you here, you'll not be hurt. As a matter of fact, let me throw some other things in that category. Now, it's not being bitten by a serpent, but how many of you have been in your automobile and have come that close to being in a bad accident? Me too. Now, God bless you. I know some of you have had tragic losses in wrecks, and I don't mean to bring that up, but I believe that that's like being bitten by a serpent. God can deliver you. And, and, and I'm not going to take up a snake. Now, my grandkids will and do and scare Grandma D to death, and she thinks they're a little bit less than level-headed when they do that. I better leave that. What about this one? They'll lay hands on the sick, and they'll recover. Is it okay to pray for the sick? Is it okay to visit the sick and lay hands on them? Not saying that I am a healer because God's the healer. It bothers me to see preachers on, on, on TV quote unquote heal people because they don't, but talk like they're a healer. They may be God's man, and pardon me, they may be a charlatan too. But they may be God's man, but it's God's the healer and not, not them. And we need to keep that straight. But we can pray for each other, and I think it's okay to lay hands on and, and pray for somebody that's sick. And I think God may hear our prayers and may lift them up again. He does have the power, don't you think? And I think there are some of us in this room right now who have been lifted up from sickness and injury, and impending death because of the prayers of God's people and the touch of the Holy Spirit on our lives. <laughs> they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So God, Jesus gave them this advice and he told them to do these things and then he left them to do those things because the next couple of verses tell us that he was received up into heaven and, and, and he sat on the right hand of God and that these men back at this time went forth doing what he said to do and it worked. It worked, friends. <laughs> Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, forever. I believe it'll still work. 
radical or not, I believe it will still work. Now, let me say this. I have prayed for things that I did not get. I have prayed for people to get well, and they got well, but I have prayed for people, Brother Jess, to get well, and God took them on home. Now, that's the, that's the eternal getting well, but I wanted them to stay. Did God not answer my prayers? I think he did. I think he did. He said, no, son, this is what's best now. You don't see it now. But in eternity you will, and you'll see this is the best thing. Don't understand it all, but God's still on the throne. He's, a, he's, he's there with it. Jesus is there with the Father. They've got everything under control. What I just said, my lambs. I, sometimes, I, sometimes I feel like that's not true. I, I mean, I look around me in the world today, in our own country today, I look around me and I think, my goodness, how in the world did we get in this mess we are in? I don't mean to be pessimistic, but I think we're in a mess. <laughs> but I do think God's still on the throne. I think Jesus is by his side. And I think the time's coming where all these wrinkles are going to be ironed out and it's all going to be okay. So, is it worthwhile continuing to do the Great Commission? Yes. By the grace of God and through His power, we can do something today. Let's have a verse of an invitation. This is an open invitation. If you're not saved, it's to come and be saved. If you have a burden, it's to come and lay it at the altar of God. If you want to come and bow at the altar and praise His name, it's for that as well. Let's stand together. Father in heaven, we thank You that You're still on the throne. We thank You that you still love us. We thank you that you still save those that hear and come to you. And we pray that you would use us, Father, in our humble way, in our poor way, in our weak way, to help spread the gospel even in this modern time. In Christ's name, amen. appropriate song to end the service with. Let me share some announcements. We, we got a busy calendar coming up at church and in our lives here. Uh, some things you need to know about. Next week, the week of November the 6th, throughout the week is Missions Conference in Indian Creek. We have a missionary scheduled to be here Thursday night. We'll have our prayer meeting Wednesday night. Then the next night, Thursday night, uh, Sam Paxton uh, is a home missionary, I believe, from Cape, and he'll be here with us at uh, 7 o'clock. And then um, Sunday, the 13th, will be the missions rally in Joplin. Uh, I'm looking on here. Okay, Sunday the 13th, in the morning service here with us, Brother Frank Webster will be here. Uh, Frank is a missionary. Now, you remember him from from uh, pastoring at Neosho and then being the director of our state work for a long time. He and Debbie have retired and gone to Florida and he's, he's starting a new church down there amongst some retirees who are far from being Christians, he said. 
and so he'll, he'll be here the 13th in the morning. Then on the 20th, on the 20th, we, somehow we missed communion and foot washing service. We're going to do that on the evening of Sunday, the 20th of November, that evening. And then on the 16th, if, if I got my date right, on the 16th will be our annual Thanksgiving fellowship dinner that evening here at the church. Got it? <laughs> All right. God bless you. Uh, come back tonight. Anyone have a word? Brother Adam, dismiss us in prayer, please.